the protesters seem to have disappeared from Bahrain's capital thanks to the intense military crackdown. We ventured into another side of Bahrain, a side the government didn't want the world to see, to find out where they've gone. We drove to the Shia villages, passing military checkpoints as we left the capital. So we're gonna hang out with these protesters for a little bit. This is what the protests look like today. Young boys who've been hit with tear gas. Now, uh, the documentary that we just saw a clip of never aired. It never aired on CNN International. Why not? Well, I, I still haven't been given uh, an exact reason as to why not why it didn't air. I went and visited with the president of CNN International, Tony Maddox, twice uh, on behalf of my dumbfounded crew, and, uh, and we were never given uh, a, an answer. And so I started uh, investigating the situation, Liz, after several employees who'd been at the network for years approached me and said, you need to look into this. There's something going on. It's very strange. They're not airing your documentary. And after some investigation, we found out that CNN International is actually making money from the Bahrain regime. They, they are a, a customer of Bahrain. Bahrain is paying CNN International to create content that shows Bahrain in a favorable light. Uh, and, and then air, also not only to create that content, Liz, to then air that content on CNN International. Uh, and in one of the shows, it was called I List Bahrain. It was back in uh, 2010. It was sponsored by Bahrain. And, and Richard Quest was live from the country for a week talking about the Formula One race and how progressive Bahrain wa was and how the crown prince was a reformer. Well, we, we saw in February 2011 that under the uh, crown prince's rule, the, the military troops shot and killed unarmed protesters in, in broad daylight. And, and this is very dangerous because what CNN is doing, and they're not only taking money from just Bahrain, they've also uh, produced similar content for Georgia, Kazakhstan, and other nations as well, Lebanon. And, and, and what makes this dangerous is they're not disclosing to the viewers that these sponsored programs are actually being sponsored. Or if they are disclosing it, it's in very small gray lettering at the bottom of the article. And, and that's dangerous not only to our foreign policy, but once again, and, and uh, making the American public and, and the public in general that's watching this network think that there are rosy situations happening in these countries uh, when, when that's not the case, as we've seen with Bahrain. And, and it's, it's defrauding viewers and it's defrauding their own journalists. Uh, I, I was not told as a journalist working at the network that, that this was going on. It wasn't clearly disclosed to me that at the same time I was investigating the Bahrain regime Bahrain was a paying customer at, at CNN, Liz. And you did this all, you found this out all through your own research. Um, what did CNN tell you uh, in terms of when you were like, hey, why aren't you playing my documentary that I, you know, I, I risk danger and to, to bring this story? And uh, what, what did they tell you as to, you know, why they weren't playing it? Well, well, that's what made me more suspicious is because they never gave us an answer. They never told us why they weren't weren't playing it, even though uh, I asked the head of CNN Inter International twice about it, and even uh, bosses above me told me they didn't have answers for me, and I'd have to go searching for those answers. So, so that pretty much, as an investigative reporter, tells me that something's going on. And so on behalf of my crew, uh, who, you know, we... we I, I got to get to the bottom of things, Liz. I mean, we had fixers and drivers in Bahrain who are currently now have been laid off because they helped us film that documentary. Uh, some who are continually still harassed. Uh, uh, Doctors Without Borders employee who actually drove us into these villages to show us doctors who'd been beaten by security forces. He risked his safety. Uh, several months after our documentary, his home was burnt down. And in part, activists say because he helped see in with that documentary. I mean, these sources, these people on the ground did not know that at the same time CNN was taking money from this regime, 
to make rosy content that would negate their content. Um, and, and they risked their lives. And I feel like CNN owes them an apology as well as an apology to viewers and its, its own journalists for, for defrauding them with, with this information, Liz. Wow, Amber. Uh, really, really eye-opening and really appreciate you coming on the show and, and telling us all about this. That was Amber Lyon, three-time Emmy Award-winning journalist, photographer, and filmmaker. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it.